the new way to store data. You know, we're used to old hard drives or like we start off with like ROM, which is read only memory, that old, old type of memory from the beginning computers. And then you go to hard disk drives, which has like cylinders inside. So, you know, your standard IDE drives or SATA drives. And then now we transmit into solid state drives, <clears throat> which is basically stored on a chip, like a jump drive. But now, and all those have limited capabilities. They're talking about storing data. And they said they already can do it. They've already done it. It's just expensive to do. What have they done? You can store data now in your DNA. Oh, yeah. I heard about this. They say that they can store all the data in the whole world. In all existence, all digital data, everything on enough DNA that takes up just a ping pong ball. They can store all the data that's in the Library of Congress within the DNA the size of a poppy seed. That's more data than I have on my phone. That's more data than Alice. Is that possible? Yes. And this can all be physically stored on DNA, that double helix. They say by 20... 25, there'll be 33 zettabytes. All these numbers that are astronomical can be all stored on such little platforms now. And think about it. Now we can, if we can manipulate data storage onto biology, literally a DNA molecule, which is biological, you know we're already on a platform to where we're able to manipulate the human construction. And this is the goal of the World Economic Forum. Agenda 2030. Singularity. Turning into a bird man. Someone's going to put that video up because I don't know if anybody knows <laughs> what they really know. But uh, I'm just trying to figure out like <clears throat> how much now the door is opened. Like how many uh, videos could a pornographer download into his own DNA now? That's very small compared to all the information in the world. That's like nothing. Imagine how many zettabytes Epstein could get his hands on. Oh, sure. <clears throat> and you know what? It's stored in your DNA. Yeah. He would actually have it with him. It'd be in his hand, the, literally the palm of his hand. Yeah, that's exactly what he wants. Yeah. That's what's interesting here. If they can compile all the data in the world into a ping pong ball, how easy. See, what I'm making the propagation here. We're already at the point to where simulation can be established. If we can construct all information into a compressed size of a ping pong ball, the only thing we need now is the processing power to extrapolate that data in a visual, believable dynamic like the Unreal Engine. If you guys ever seen the Unreal Engine, it's unreal. I mean, how realistic that thing is. Yeah, my brother always used to play it, and I would watch him and eat candy. Now we have all the data in the world already there. We just need a way to compile that data into something that's visually believable. And so it's there. All I'm trying to say is it's very interesting, but they can do it now. DNA storage technology exists today, but to make it viable, researchers have to clear a few daunting technological hurdles around integrating different technologies. As a part of a major collaboration to do that work, the team at Los Alamos National Security, which is Area 51, has developed a key enabling technology for molecular storage. Our software, the Adaptive DNA Storage Codex, ADS Codex, translates data files from the binary language of zeros and ones that computers understand into a four-letter code biology understands. ADX Codex is a key part of Intelligence Advanced Research Projects, IARPA, Molecular Information Storage, MIST, MIST program. MIST seeks to bring cheaper, bigger, longer lasting storage to big data operations in governments and private sectors with a short term goal of writing one terabyte, a trillion bytes, and reading 10 terabytes within 24 hours. So they are already doing this, of course. Area 51, where else would they be doing this? But this is in the hands of the American government and in the American technological sector. 
ADX Codex. Almost sounds like they're colluding with aliens, though. It could be. This could be alien technology that they have reverse engineered. You know, the aliens, if they can, tran- if they can travel interdimensionally or just dimensionally, but through space, they need some kind of advanced techno- technology and a way to transmit that technology because they would have to have GPS for all the stars and the galaxies and everything. And this is a lot of information and you don't have enough storage to put this on a hard physical drive. But if you can store all the information of the earth and all history and existence onto a ping pong ball, that sounds like alien technology. Yeah. I mean, it screams Roswell. It screams... Blue Book. Tokenization. Non-refungible. NFT. It's in the blockchain. It is. And it's all going to be controlled by the FedNow app. So I'm bringing this to you guys as a primer, because we're going to talk about this more. Because this clearly is going to be the next evolution of data transmission. Because forget all these hard drives, forget all these jump drives, forget all this, how are we going to store this data? The whole world can be on a ping pong. That means everybody in this whole world can own all the data. And I was thinking, how would they store this data if we need instant access, like RAM, read, read access memory? That's like fast access that's temporarily stored. How would we do that on a large scale, like with Neuralink? Well, if they can put this data into your DNA... The Neuralink system can just tap into a small segment of your DNA, which already stores all this information locally. So you don't even need to connect to the cloud. You would only need to connect to the cloud so you can download this information to your DNA. And then your DNA will store all this information. Because I was like, man, that's going to be hard for it to read. Because what if it bogs down because the cloud is all congested because of too much, it's bottleneck because of too much data congestion. But if they can download it locally, it'll be instant and still fast. And I was like, how are they going to do that? They can put all this data on your DNA, store it locally in your DNA, and then the Neuralink system can read your DNA. So uh, I'm pretty sure, I would assume, Elon probably and their boys already understand that. Yeah, there's, no, there's no telling what heights would be able to achieve. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Now we know. They can do it. They could store all the information on the internet simply in your DNA. And it all would fit without you noticing anything. And then they can tap the electrical system, data transmissional system of something like Neuralink into that DNA sector. And you would have everything stored locally on your, in your mind. So it's all plausible. We are one step away from literally being in a simulation. Yeah. It's, it's really exciting. Well, it is interesting. Because this is just a building block. And we're going to talk about it more, but I just wanted to bring that out just in case you didn't know. That is the next step in the evolution of data transmission.